the evening of November 21st, 2016, I had the pleasure of attending the Virtually Real Collaborative Pop-Up Project at the Royal Academy of Arts in London. I was pleased to meet with and interview Ricard Stiber, the President of Viveport and Senior Vice President of Virtual Reality at HTC. Glutton. I'm the glutton also. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. What do you think of the food, Ned? Pretty good? Ned, pay attention. What's the food like? <laughs> You're part of the interview now. <laughs> the food is a prawn in the crispy roll. The oh, right. That is a winner for me as well. This bacon with um, prosciutto ham. It's nice. I think we're focusing on the wrong thing though. Hi. <clears throat> so, Hello. nice to meet you. I'm here today with uh, Mr. Ricard Stiber. Great to be here. And uh, we've been enjoying the uh, Virtual Reality Art Exhibition. And I have a few questions for you, as you might imagine. Yeah, so, excellent. Uh, my first is, do you see this medium, this art form um, uh, of virtual reality as, being, uh, as having longe longevity? Yes, absolutely. I, actually, I think we're on the, on the brink of a, of a new area of art. Uh, I think that uh, if you look at art being sort of sculptures or paintings, I think that with virtual reality, a couple of things happen. As, as an artist, you're able to express yourself freely in a, in a three-dimensional space. Uh, and I think also what's interesting for us as uh, recipients of art, uh, we will be able to have a fuller experience of what the artist intended to, to tell us with their art piece. But also we can visit any art museum uh, in the world, essentially, in virtual reality, so you don't, uh, not everyone has the, the luxury of being close to Royal Academy, uh, but now people from all around the world could actually visit Royal Academy and experience these pieces of art. That is, as if by magic, you've led into my next question, which is around accessibility. Because one of my immediate <coughs> thoughts around virtual reality is, does it cheapen or lessen the form because of the fact that most people don't really have the access to virtual reality equip equipment. Does that make this art form any less valid than, say, a painting in an art gallery or a, a piece of ceramic art? I would actually argue that uh, it's more accessible than an art gallery and because everyone who has a, a smartphone today are able to use the smartphone to basically gaze into the virtual world. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they have a uh, like computing device at the game console or a PC or a Mac or something, they can have a full, uh, more immersive experience. So the way I'm thinking about it, it's almost like a pyramid where on the lower end you have mobile phone VR, which is sort of, you can rotation, you can look around and you can sort of see into the VR world. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have the Vive and more immersive, you can actually walk around in the museum and interact with objects and have a much more sort of fully immersive experience. Mm -hmm. So I do think that it is accessible to everyone. And actually you don't even have to go to the museum to experience it. You can do it from, from home or on the, on the, on the subway. Mm, absolutely. No, I, I completely agree. Uh, I think the, the question next, make me sound like a terrible Philistine, is around skill. Now, my wife, interesting fact, she's more actually than you. much yes. more skilled than me. Yeah, clearly. She's a ceramic artist. And um, in order to create art with ceramics, she yep. also has to understand the, um, the clay she's working with, understand how to uh, form it, and understand how to fire it, how to glaze it. And that's a certain amount of skill. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that skill and art are the same thing. They're completely different things. But do you think, again, does this make this less valid form because of the fact it's so accessible and so easy to manipulate the art form? Yeah. I think, I think um, artists clearly have talent and an eye for uh, creating things, and I think that's always going to be the case. Mm -hmm. I do think that there will be new skills uh, that will be required, so of course you could leverage the skills that you have. But what's interesting uh, with art today is that it might be a, a sort of a three-dimensional shape, but in that experience you might have other things. You might have animation, uh, things might actually evolve or move, or you might have music, uh, other things that uh, when your wife is creating, maybe she's ex feeling joy, maybe she's feeling uh, some other kind of emotion. Mm -hmm. So she's able to basically uh, transcend that emotion to the recipient. And it might include more things than a still object. It could be something which is a mu uh, moving colors, it could be music, it could be other things. So I think that there will be more tools for the artist to create things. 
uh, because essentially what they're trying to do is that they have a dream or they have something that they want to tell you mm. and the palette is just going to be much richer with virtual reality. I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I think my last one is a, a little bit cynical. Um, I, I suppose part of, uh, uh, in real terms, in the art world, there's a certain amount of commercialization, monetization of, of people's art. Do you think, again, with virtual reality, that the ability to monetize art, is there, is there a greater opportunity to do that, or is there a lesser opportunity? I hope, I hope there will be a greater opportunity, and, and I think there will be opportunities to create unique experiences or unique items uh, that maybe even uh, me as uh, the buyer of art could be part of that experience or could inject something of myself into this piece to make it more personal and uh, sort of a one of a one of a kind. And then of course we're talking digital art so distribution is there. Mm. There's an opportunity for the artist uh, to be sort of a hologram and talk about the experiences. And one of the things we're showing here is not just the final piece but it's kind of the evolution from sketches. Mm. So you can almost have this narrative about what is the artist thinking as, as the piece evolves. And maybe it completely changes direction because sometimes uh, you know, where you, where you start, you may not end up. Absolutely. So, Ricard is the Senior Vice President of Virtual Reality and Vice, and, I'm sorry, President of, of Viport. Viport. So Viport is essentially yeah. the, think of it, the App Store Experience Store where you go to find all these experiences. One of the things I really like about Viveport, and it's like um, something that's been missing a little bit from VR for a while, and now you've brought it back, is the ability for <coughs> developers to, to sort of showcase their early work yep. and actually give away stuff for free so people can enjoy and see where, yep. where the stuff is going. That's fantastic. And I, I suppose, leading question, development of these, these uh, things, it's an artistic form in its own right, isn't it? These developers that are using Unity and, and, uh, yeah. and other um, applications, it's equally as, uh, as important art form. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the art and the graphics they do is, is of course, like mind-blowing yeah. creative, mm -hmm. and, and many of them have animations and storytelling, uh, so it is, it is very complex, and I think that it requires certain skill to, to create this presence that we talk about, so basically trick your brain so that you are mm -hmm. there. So it's a combination of having visual experiences, auditory experiences, as well as physical experiences with this kind of controller that basically create the full thing. And uh, so that's why I think it's exciting because what we see today is people taking paintings and sort of sculptures uh, into virtual reality. Mm. But very, very soon there will be much more multi-sensory experiences uh, that we may or may not be able to print in the, in the real world. But that's fantastic. No, it, it, absolutely fantastic. I really appreciate the work you're doing. Can continue with it, of course, yeah, and, uh, and I can't wait to see what else gets created. Yeah, thank you very too. much for meeting me today. Yeah, Cheers. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Thanks to Ricard Stiber and the HTC team, the Royal Academy for their support, hospitality, and beautiful venue. Big thank you to the artists, Adam Farmaway, Elliot Dodd, and Jesse Jetpacks, not her real name, I don't think, from the Royal Academy schools, and not least, thanks to my mate Ned for doing the filming and having a Volavant eating contest uh, with me, which he won, incidentally.